Hello everyone. It's been a while since I did a rock, so I figured I was going to paint a rock today. So I painted this with this cranberry wine color. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. I want to try and get more defined dots. And that I mean more texture to them so that they bump up a little bit more. Now, I've played around with these mediums and stuff. And I've had a little bit of success, not a lot, as far as making the raised dots. And the, I've tried to do like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mike Hammer and um, oh, other artists that are like him that make blobs and... And they have these big raised dots. And they look so cool. And I've been trying to accomplish that for quite some time. And I've watched video after video. And I still cannot seem to get it to be the way I want it to be. But I'm going to use this matte gel. And I'm going to mix it with my paint. And just do some dots on here. And see if I can get little raised dots. Not the big ones like they do. But... Just to make them a little bit more defined so I can resin over the rock later and then you'll feel a nice texture on the rock after the fact. So let's go ahead and try and do this and see how this goes. I'm also using a different color palette than I'm used to just to change it up a little bit. And I'll show you the first time I mix this so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Now, this is this the matte gel, and it doesn't matter if it's gloss or matte, because if you resin over the top, it's going to be shiny anyways. I'm just going to take, oh, that. That's a pretty good size glob of it. And I probably don't need that much, but I'm going to use it and see how this turns out. Let's start with just this warm white color. I'm adding quite a bit of paint to that because I added quite a bit of the, the gel. I'm going to add some more paint because it's still peaking. All right, so this is the consistency I have it at. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of a yogurt consistency, but it's not falling right away, but it is falling. So it's, it's a little bit thicker than I'd like to have it. So I'm going to see how this dots and see if when it dries if it stays with a thicker dot on there so this is how I'm gonna mix my paints for this I'm not gonna show that every time I'm just gonna show it that one time okay so let's start with my normal number 10 in the center and it does have a fairly good bump in it and I'm leaving the bumps I'm gonna add to on top of the bumps I don't know if you can see that. See how it's bumped up? Okay, I'm going to go to the number three and do some dots around it. Okay, so now I'm using this coral blush and I mix some of that matte gel in with that. I'm going to go up to the number three. And do another row of dots. Okay, and I'm going to do another row with the number four in the same color. Okay, now I think when I top dot on these, these are really going to add more texture. Now, 
I don't know if you can see. Let's see. See how bumped up they are? Okay. Now, I think I'm going to use white. Let's go up to the number 8. I don't want to mix too many colors because I don't want to give it time to dry out. I think it's this will be more of a process if I do more of these. What I wanted to see is just how raised I can get these. That was with the number 8. Now, I'm going to go much bigger. Let's go all the way up to the number 14. I'm going to do another row. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the number 3. And I'm going to walk those, that coral blush around. I'm just going to use these two colors with the medium in it to raise them up. So I'm going to have those be mainly my base dots. So I'm going to come out and do another row in the white with the number 10. And I'm going to go super big dot in between this number 17 in white. And then I'm going to do a bigger dot in that coral. And I'm going to call that good for my pattern. Just because I want this one just to be about all about the tactile. And I'm going to see, I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to top dot. But these are already flattening a little bit. They're going down over here. So that's good, because I want the bump, but I don't want a peak. I don't know if you can see. Okay. Well, let's go, this is the number eight. Okay. So the top layer of it's dry, but the bottom isn't because, see I touched this one and I see how it indented. But that's okay because if I just do a very light touch, we should be fine. And then I could just let it dry overnight or something before I resin it. So I'm going to come in with this Georgia clay color. And like I said, I'm not going to be super picky on my pattern as much as I normally am because I'm more so trying to build these dots up. So I'm going to go with the number 9 on these. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like when they're pointy. I like to feel the dot. I like it to be a smooth bump. I don't know. That's just my preference. Okay, so for those, let's use... This is the number five. And I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, and I think I'm going to use the number five out on these two. I can always make bumps like this with the paint, even without the medium in it, but when they dry, they flatten out. So I'm hoping adding that medium is really going to make a difference. I'm going to do this. This is with the number five yet, too. Okay, and for those bigger ones on the outside. Now the problem is, is that peak. And if you get too big, you could get lopsided on these outer ones. So I'm going to go with the number 10, but I don't know if this is going to ruin it. Okay, 
I'm going to bring the camera down at an angle to see if you can see what I'm seeing. See how bumped up they are? This is looking real good. We'll see how it looks when it dries. Now I'm going to dot. I'm going to use the white, but I'm not going to use it with the um, medium in it. I'm just going to use it plain to dot on those other ones. I'm going to use the number five. And then for those inside ones, I think I'm going to use the number two. Okay, now that's dry to the touch again. But it's not dry all the way through. I'm not going to be able to resin this today. I'm going to have to like let it sit overnight. Because when I touched that one earlier, it concaved. And I don't want it doing that when I resin it. Otherwise, the whole point of what I'm doing is, is useless. So I got this melon color, and I'm going to go in... And I'm going to dot on these darker ones one more time. And mainly it's just to add another layer to build it up a little bit more. So on these outside ones, I'm going to use the number 5. The number 3 for those. I think I might just leave it like that. I think that's enough top dots in that. There's enough color there. And when I make another one, if this turns out, I'll probably use a much wider color palette than what I got on here. But I'm all going for this raised dot look. You can see the bumps in that. So the next time I show you the stone, I'm going to have it resined. But I'm going to wait 24 hours, let that dry completely, and then I'm going to resin it and wait 24 hours, and then I'll continue this video. If you want to learn how to resin, I have resin tutorials up, and I also have a link in those resin tutorials to Rachel's Rocks tutorial, which is where I learned to resin. She does fantastic, and that you can learn a lot from her if you want to go check her out. But... I'll leave it at that for today, and I will be back soon. All right, the back didn't come out too bad. I still am going to sand that because I don't like it. But that's like one of the best backs I've had. And then the top bumps... If you can see, now I don't like this as much as I thought I would. I mean, it feels okay, but I like the Luler bumps better. But that's how you can get some raised dots if you want them. Let's see if you can see from the side. pretty all right so if you're not a subscriber I would love to have you and I will talk to you all tomorrow bye